Hello friends, welcome back to Metric Question World. Today we are going to discuss basic procedures for cell counting. In previous class, we have learned about hemocytometry and different types of hemocytometers and also improved new bar counting chamber in detail. And this is the fourth video of DME lab technician exam preparation. Okay. And if you are watching without subscribing, please do subscribe the channel, turn on bell button to get notifications on time. So, we are starting with basic procedures for cell counting. The sample collected for cell counting is capillary or venous blood. If we are choosing venous blood, EDTA or double oxalate can be used. Most commonly used sample is EDTA anticoagulated blood. Anticoagulant in powder form only can be used for cell counting. The blood is diluted with specific diluting fluid in order to facilitate counting under microscope. There are specific diluting fluids for RBC, WBC, platelet and eosinophil count. Dilution can be made either by pipettes or by tubes. If we are using pipettes, the dilution is called micro dilution and if we are using tube, it is called as macro or bulk dilution where large amount of blood and anticoagulant is used. Sorry, diluting fluid is used. There are specific diluting fluids for each cell counting that means specific for rbc counting wbc counting platelet counting and eosinophil counting the diluting fluid used should be isotonic to plasma it should fix the cells and should have a high specific gravity to avoid aggregation of cells it should contain pre preservatives to prevent bacterial or fungal growth and it should prevent clotting clumping and rule formation Next is micro dilution or pipette dilution. If you are using pipettes for dilution, that is WBC pipette or RBC pipette, it is called as micro dilution. The blood is taken up to 0.5 mark either in WBC or RBC pipette as the case may be. In RBC pipette, we are using 1 in 100 dilution and WBC pipette, we are using 1 in 20 dilution. So, so blood up to 0.5 mark has to be taken. And after aspiration of blood, wipe outside of the pipette, then diluting fluid up to the 11 mark in WBC pipette and diluting fluid up to 101 mark for RBC pipette. The pipette should be held vertically downward so that the bead prevents the entry of air bubbles into the bulb. Mix well by holding the tip of the pipette between two fingers. Then keep for 5 minutes. Next is about macro dilution or bulk dilution. For RBC counting, 0.02 ml or 20 microliter blood is taken and 3.98 ml of diluting fluid. For WBC counting, we need to aspirate 0.02 ml of blood or 20 microliter blood plus 0.38 ml of diluting fluid. Next is about charging. The counting chamber should be clean and dry. The cover glass is placed on the two side stages so that it covers both the ruled areas. The correct placement of the cover glass is assessed by the formation of Newton's ring or rainbow on application of a slight pressure. Ordinary cover slips cannot be used as they have uneven surfaces. The process of introduction of diluted blood into the counting chamber is called charging and it is to be noted that if you are using pipette dilution or micro dilution, discard the first few drops as the fluid present in the stem of the pipette is unmixed with blood. The counting chamber is placed in a flat surface and charging is done at an angle of 40 degree. The charging angle is important so note it down and allow for 3 to 5 minutes to set it. The ruled area has to be focused first under low power and then under high power. The low power objective is used for doing total WBC count, absolute eosinophil count and high power objective is used for RBC counting and platelet counting. Count the number of cells in each square from left to right. Of the cells which touch the boundary line, count all those touching upper and left hand lines. Do not count the lower and right hand lines. This will ensure no cell will be counted twice. 
count the four squares in the case of wbc count and the four corner and central squares of the rbc area for rbc count after counting the total number of cells per cubic millimeter of undiluted blood can be calculated by knowing the number of cells area counted area counted will be di different for rbc and wbc counting and dilution of blood it also be different for each blood cell count and depth of the counting chamber depth of the counting chamber only depends upon the type of counting chamber we are using commonly two types of counting chambers one is improved newer counting chamber and for csf it is fuchs rosenthal counting chamber improved newer counting chamber the depth is 0.1 mm and fuchs rosenthal 0.2 mm so n into dilution factor into depth factor divided by area counted dilution factor is 1 in 100 for rbc and 1 in 20 for wbc and depth factor is 0.1 and area counted is depending upon the cell counted we will discuss it in detail so next is total erythrocyte count we have already discussed the charging of counting chamber pipettes used for counting etc so only difference is for diluting fluids here we have to discuss rbc diluting fluid diluting fluids commonly used for rbc count are normal saline daisy's fluid toysen's fluid gobert's fluid and heinz fluid normal saline can be used in emergency situations but it will cause slight roulet formation it has advantage of simplicity and ready availability the contents are 0.85 gram per gram sodium chloride and 100 ml distilled water next is daisy's fluid or formol citrate daisy's fluid is also called as formol citrate as it contain trisodium citrate and formalin trisodium citrate prevent clotting clumping and roulet formation while formalin prevent bacterial and fungal growth next is about heinz fluid in heinz fluid sodium chloride sodium sulfate mercury chloride are the contents sodium chloride acts as antiseptic while sodium sulfate and mercury chloride provide specific gravity and isotonicity next is calculation calculation of rbc count we know that the central square is used for rbc counting central square of which four corner squares and central small square is used for counting but the whole central area is of rbc area no but we are only counting the five cells five columns four corner and central square it is equal to n and the total number of cells in the 25 squares is 5 n we know that rbc area is the central square which has 1 mm area and it is divided into 25 small squares by triple lines okay we have to get the number of cells present in the whole 25 small squares or the 1 mm square area but we are only counting only five columns right so we have to indirectly calculate the cells present in all 25 squares that means it is 25 by 5 it is 5 so 5 into n is the total number of cells present in 25 squares i hope you got it next is dilution factor dilution for rbc count is 1 in 200 so the dilution factor is 200 then depth of the counting chamber depth of the counting chamber is 0.1 so 0.1 is equal to 1 by 10 or 1 in 10 so the depth factor is 10 then area counted area counted is 1 mm square we have 9 mm square area in the counting chamber nine squares are there of which the central square is used for rbc counting which of which is of 1 mm square so total number of cells into dilution factor into depth factor and area count divided by area counted that means 5n into 200 into 10 divided by 1 is equal to n into 10000 is the calculation factor for rbc counting so simply we can use 
the calculation factor for rbc count that n into 10000 next is normal value of rbc count for male it is 4.5 to 6 millions per millimeter cube and for female it is 4 to 5.5 millions per millimeter cube the normal value of female will be lesser than that of males if the patient is anemic the dilution is reduced to 1 in 100 normally we are using 1 in 200 dilution for anemic patients we need to dilute the blood in 1 in 100 that means blood up to 1 mark and diluting fluid up to 101 mark erythrocyte count increased in polycythemia vera and heart disease and it is decreased in all types of anemias so today we are winding up you can watch the previous videos from playlist and don't forget to subscribe the channel share to your friends thank you